I've been intrigued by this question of whether we could evolve or develop a sixth sense, a sense that would give us seamless access and easy access to meta-information or information that may exist somewhere that may be relevant to help us make the right decision about whatever it is that we're coming across. And some of you may argue, well, don't today's uh, cell phones do that already? But I would say no. Uh, when you meet someone here at TED, and this is the top networking place, of course, of the year, you don't shake somebody's hand and then say, can you hold on for a moment while I take out my phone and Google you? Or uh, when you go to the supermarket and you're standing there in that huge aisle of different types of toilet papers, you don't take out your cell phone and open a browser and go to a website to try to decide which of these uh, different toilet papers is the most ecologically responsible purchase to make. So we don't really have easy access to all this relevant information that can just help us make optimal decisions about what to do next and what actions to take. And so my research group at uh, the Media Lab has been um, developing a series of um, inventions to give us access to this information in a um, sort of easy way without requiring that the user changes any of their uh, behavior. And I'm here to unveil <laughs> our latest effort and most successful effort so far, which is still very much a work in process. I'm actually wearing the device right now, and um, we've sort of cobbled it together with um, components that are uh, off the shelf, and that, by the way, only cost uh, $350 at this point in time. Um, I'm wearing a camera, just a simple webcam, a portable battery-powered projection system uh, with a little mirror. These components communicate to my cell phone in my pocket, which acts as the uh, communication and computation device. And in the video here, we see my student Pranav Mistry, who's really the genius who's been implementing and designing this whole system. And we see how this system lets him walk up to any surface and start using his hands to interact with the information that is projected in front of him. The system tracks the four significant fingers. In this case, he's wearing simple marker caps, and you may recognize. But if you want a more stylish version, uh, you could also paint your nails in different colors. And uh, the camera basically tracks these four fingers and recognizes any gestures that he's making, so he can just go to, uh, for example, a map of Long Beach, zoom in and out, etc. The system also recognizes iconic gestures, such as the take a picture gesture, and then takes a picture of whatever is in front of you. <laughs> and when he then walks back to the media lab, he can just go up to any wall and project all the pictures that he's taken sort through them and organize them and resize them, etc. again, using all natural uh, gestures. So some of you most likely were here two years ago and saw the demo by um, uh, Jeff Hahn, or some of you may think, well, doesn't this look like the Microsoft Surface table? And yes, you also interact using natural gestures, both hands, etc. But the difference here is that you can use any surface. You can walk up to any surface, including your hand, if nothing else is available, <laughs> and interact with this projected data. The device is completely portable and can be... <laughs> So one important difference is that it's totally mobile. Another even more important difference is that in mass production, this would not cost more tomorrow than today's cell phones and would actually not um, sort of be a bigger package and could look a lot more stylish than this uh, uh, version that I'm wearing around my neck. Um, but other than letting some of you live out your fantasy of 
looking as cool as Tom Cruise in Minority Report. Um, the reason why we're really excited about this device is that it um, really can act as one of the sixth sense devices that gives you relevant information about uh, whatever is in front of you. So we see Pranav here going into the supermarket, and he's uh, shopping for some paper towels. And as he picks up a product, the system can recognize the product that he's picking up using either image recognition or marker technology and give him the green light or an orange light. Um, he can ask for additional information. So this particular... Um, <laughs> choice here is a particularly good choice given his personal criteria. Some of you may want the toilet paper with the most bleach in it rather than the most ecologically <laughs> responsible choice. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> if he picks up a book in the bookstore, he can get the Amazon rating, gets projected right on the cover of the book. This is uh, Juan's book, our previous speaker, um, which gets a great rating, by the way, at Amazon. And so Pranav turns the page of the book and can then see additional information about the book, reader comments, uh, maybe sort of information by his favorite critic, etc. If he turns to a particular page, he finds an annotation by maybe an expert of a friend of ours that gives him a little bit of additional information about whatever is on that particular page. Reading the newspaper, it never has to be <laughs> outdated. <laughs> you can get video annotations of the events that you're reading about. You can get the latest sports scores, etc. This is a more controversial one. <laughs> As you interact with someone at TED, maybe, um, you can see a word cloud of the tags, the words that are associated with that person in their blog and personal web pages. In this case, the student is interested in cameras, etc. On your way to the airport, if you pick up your boarding pass, it can tell you that your flight is delayed, that the gate has changed, etc. And if you need to know what the current time is, it's as simple as drawing a watch <laughs> on your arm. So that's where we're at so far in uh, <laughs> developing this sixth sense that would give us seamless access to all this relevant information about the things that we may come across. My student, Pranav, who's really like I said, the genius behind this. <laughs> um. <laughs> he does deserve a lot of applause because I don't think he's slept much in the last three months, actually. And his girlfriend is probably not very happy about him either. Um, <laughs> but it's not perfect yet. It's very much a work in progress. And who knows, maybe in another 10 years, we'll be here with the ultimate um, sixth sense brain implant. Thank you. If you did an internet search in the greater Detroit area, you'd see bad news. Companies are closing, that houses were being foreclosed upon. However, when there are negative things going on, there's also opportunity. And for people that look for it, like Dave, they see the opportunity and they say, I can make a difference here. There's a constant stream of, of negative news about you know, economics and whatever. And so it's nice to inject some positive news coming out of Ypsilanti. It's motivation to, to make you want to do something to help out your town. So my friend Corinne, who uh, is the manager at the Ypsilanti Food Co-op, sent me what she thought was a grant for a solar project. Turned out it was a very low interest loan. So it kind of sparked my interest, and then I did some searching and was able to actually find a small $6,000 grant from the state of Michigan. But I've never done solar. I didn't know square one about how it was done. We bought panels, we figured out how to do it, and that was our first system. We needed to monitor the power and be able to track how much is coming in and out. I did find products that would do this for us, but those products could cost thousands of dollars. You know, we didn't have a thousand dollars. We invented a way to read utility meters for essentially free. My goal is to see a cloud. 
And I wanted to see a nice smooth solar graph, and then I wanted to dip a little bit and know that a cloud just went over the solar panels. My wildest dreams is to have 100 locations in Ypsilanti, all on Solar Ipsy, all being tracked in real time. And Ypsilanti would be the place to come for solar information. When I started, I was searching and, and I was looking in 10 or 12 different places. And so now we have a website where information's already been collated. And so somebody can search on solar, find this site, and hopefully have all the information they need. It's just amazing that you see people in far off remote villages in like Mongolia, you know, if they're looking for solar power for some information, it's there for them to find. It's happened, you know, it's, it's so cool.